All right, I'm starting my first commute. I reset my trip odometer. And I am currently at 92% battery. So we'll see how it goes at the end of the day. Alrighty, you just pulled in the garage and the commute is done. It is down to 60% charge. And here are the stats, 71.8 miles, 19 kilowatt hours used. And so now I'm gonna put it on the charge and see how long it takes at level one. And let's see here. It says it's gonna take 15 hours. This is the Tesla UMC or universal mobile connector. And what this is, is some people just call it a charger because this is what you plug in to actually charge your car. And the tip that it comes with, the adapter is actually just a standard 110 adapter. They call this level one charging because it's 110 volts and it's slow. It only charges three miles per hour of range. The neat thing about the UMC is I removed the original plug and I'm going to put this adapter in there. This is a NEMA 650 adapter. This plugs into a 240 volt outlet that will charge the car at level two, which is up to 30 miles per hour of charge. That's 10 times faster than I was getting at level one. So let's get to it. One thing I love about having my Tesla in the garage, it's in backwards. I can back it in, no emissions, no worries. And it's so easy to just keep it charged all the time. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the cloud. And today I'm gonna to be installing this NEMA 650 outlet in my garage. It's a 240 volt outlet that will allow my car to charge at level two, which will get it up to 30 miles per hour of range. I'm gonna be following Tesla's guide to installing the NEMA 650 outlet. It tells you everything you need to know, all the supplies you need, and how to go about installing it. I'll put a link to this document down in the video description below. Tesla provides eight different types of connectors, adapters, that you can plug into your UMC so that it can charge from various different kinds of outlets. The best ones are the fastest, the ones that end with 50. Those are 50 amp plugs. They are the NEMA 650, which I'm going to talk about today, and the NEMA 1450. I happen to have both of these because the NEMA 1450, I did a previous installation of an outlet with the 1450, but today I'm focused purely on the 650. Now the difference between the two is that the 1450 has an extra prong here, which is a neutral wire that requires a three conductor cable going back to your, your breaker. The 650 only requires two conductors. What does that mean? Well, it means the wire is actually 30% cheaper than if you're gonna do a 1450. Now, that savings could really add up if you're talking about a long run from your circuit breaker paddle. I don't have a long run, it's mine is really short, but you can understand how, if you've got a 100 foot run, that could really add up for you. In addition, the NEMA 650 outlet is about half the cost of a 1450 because 1450 is so popular right now. So if you're budget conscious, 650 is the way to go. Now the NEMA 650 outlet that I chose is the Hubble. Uh, it's actually HBL 9367 is the number on it. It's a 50 amp, 250 volt outlet. And uh, I'll put a link to it down in the video description below. It is good for copper wire only, not aluminum. Uh, it says it right here. And uh, it's a heavy duty industrial strength outlet. I like Hubbles. The NEMA 1450 that I used is also a Hubble. So this 650, I decided to go with Hubble as well. Now with this, the adapter wants to be in this orientation here, which means that the ground has to be up. The wires come out of the top of this outlet right here. Now there are three conductors here. Two of them are gonna be providing power, and this one on the top is the ground, and you can see there's a little ground indicator right there. 
So that's ground. These two are the, the hots. And they're both gonna be hot and it doesn't matter which polarity it is. And of course, the other thing you're gonna need is wire. And this is AWG6, six, six gauge, two conductor wire. So it's very thick wire and you can see it just has two conductors and they are black and white plus the bare one for the ground. And uh, these are stranded wires. They're really thick, they're really hard to cut, but they will go, the black and the white will go in on the sides. There's also on the outlet itself, there is a strip gauge that shows how much wire to cut off. See how they're going to fit in there into that outlet so that no wire is exposed and they go in all the way though and you don't want any insulation in under the metal so that's why there's a strip gauge so this is my side of the garage where I park my car and uh, my circuit panel is right here and this is actually the outlet that I've been using for my UMC just at level one charging and it's been fine for my year and a half that I've owned the car. The big difference is that I'm going to start commuting back to work. And so I decided now is a good time for me to put the level two charging in place. Now, I also happen to have my main breaker here. I don't know if you could see it. It has a 200 on it. So this is 200 amp service. Years is going to vary, obviously. This is, um, I have plenty of space in my panel here for the the circuits, I have no problem putting in another breaker here for my um, level two charging. Now, the other thing is, I'm probably gonna put it right down here. One thing that you can know is that there's a stud on either side of your breaker box. They actually make them so they fit in between 16 inch centers, which is standard here in the US. So I'm just gonna put the outlet right down here It'll make it as easy as possible and as short a run as necessary. I won't have to drill through any studs or anything like that. Like I said, your situation may vary. Now at this point, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. I am not a licensed electrician. I am just a handy homeowner. I've been working with electricity safely for 35 years that I've owned homes. So I'm comfortable doing this. But if you're not, I really recommend you call an electrician. This is nothing to toy with. Electricity can kill you. The next step is to turn off all the power in the house. And I could just throw the breaker, the main breaker, but the best way to do it is to actually turn off your individual circuits first, then throw the main breaker, and then do the reverse. When we're done, I'm going to start the power back up the same way in reverse. Okay, all power is off in the house at this point. Now the reason why I turn all the power off in the house is because these bare metal plates right here, those would be hot if that main breaker was on. So I don't want that. I don't want to deal with that. I'm going to be fishing a wire in here. I don't want to, I just want to play it safe. Okay? So that's why I turn it off. Most electricians will not do that, but I do. And I recommend you do too. Now before I start cutting, I know I have two wires going out the bottom here, but they are back pretty far. I am not going to go in very deep. I'm just going to use my keyhole saw to go over to this stud. I did stick the saw in here and I can tell that the wood is right here. So just like I suspected. Okay, I'm sure that's the, the edge of the stud there. Now I'm just going to get my box. Okay, as I suspected, I do have some wires here, and that's fine. This should be deep enough for the box. 
Yeah, fine. No worries at all. And the other thing I need to do is I need to find a punch out here that will fit this three quarter inch, um, I don't know what to call it, Romex connector. And I've got one here. I, so the outlet's going to be there. The wire's going to go down and come up. So I want to be on this side of the box if possible. And these are too small, so I'm going to go with this one. This one is the bigger one. And that's the, uh, the connector there. I may put it in this way, and that way I can tighten the screws from the side. That's in. I can turn it. It's open all the way. Good. That's where my wire is going to come up. Okay, now you can see what I did here is I actually crisscrossed them so that the wires go in from the top, but I'm actually going to have it coming out the bottom of the box. And I won't connect the grounds until I get it in the box. It's nice that they included these two screw holes on the sides, but they would go into the sheetrock. So what I had to do was drill two holes on the side that I can put in some uh, drywall screws. And I made them elongated so they're a little bit angled so that I'll make sure that I hit the studs. Now this is the box that I'm going to be using. This is a Hubble 683 is the number on it. I'll put a link to it down in the video description with everything else. And uh, I'm just going to mount the outlet like this in this orientation. The wire is going to come out the bottom. And that's why I, I wired it like this. And you can see that's what it's going to look like. Of course the ground wire will be attached to the ground screw in the back. And pigtailed with the outlet. That's the way it'll be installed. Now I'm going to leave this wire loose. These, this connector here is going to be loose. And that way I can push the outlet in after I get the box in place because I have to screw the box in from the side. And I know some of you may say that's not code compliant to leave this loose, but that's the only way to get the, the outlet in and out quite honestly. If you ever want to change the outlet someday, you got to be able to get it out. And so I think that's uh, a fair compromise. Okay, that's good and tight. All right, you can see the ground screw way in the back there. So this wire comes out of the outlet, goes around the ground screw, and comes out here. And I'm gonna join the two of those with a wire nut, because this is the one that comes from the cable, from the, the breaker box. So those will be joined with a wire nut and all the grounds will be good.
So to recap, the wire comes from here, circles around, and comes up through here. The ground goes underneath and connects to this ground bar here. And then the black and the white wires circle around and come into the breaker here, into both poles of the breaker. That's the way it is. I know a lot of the white wires in here are connected to these bus bars on the sides, but in this case, we want them both connected to the, the breaker. And that's how these two conductors are gonna provide 240 volts to the outlet. And so that's it. Now I can close it up and turn it back on. Now to turn the panel back on, you want all the breakers still in the off position, each one of the circuits, and then I'm going to put the main back on, and then I'm going to turn on all the branches, one at a time. And that's my new breaker. And now I'm going to test the outlet. All right, to test this, I've got my good old-fashioned meter here set to 250 volts AC. I'm going to put a lead in both sides of this. Let's see if I can reach them. Evidently, I can't. Huh. All right, so the next best thing is I'm going to put this in part way, and then I'm going to... Touch both sides, and you see there, I have 240 volts, and if I cross it to the ground, I should have 120 volts from either side, across to the ground. There you go, 120, 120. Okay. So that's good, that's all, that works fine. And I have a little holster here for my UMC, and that just gets plugged in like that. And when I turn the breaker on, the light's up green, and now I can test it with the car and let's see what kind of charge I get. Day two. All right, now that I've upgraded to the level two charging, let's see how long it takes now. Instead of 15 hours, it only takes three hours and 10 minutes. <laughs> Not bad. If you are a DIY video creator struggling to find an audience, join Handy Dad TV and get instant access to an established audience that will provide more views and income than you're getting on your own. Just go to handydad.tv slash join for more information.